right. Um, this week we have one topic to cover. Yay! Um, it's rather in depth though. <clears throat> We're going to be covering lab ranges that are very similar. Similar in name, similar in area on the body. I would recommend generating a table to help keep the disease and lab markers separate. Um, so let's dive in. The endocrine system is vast. <clears throat> Excuse me. So too are the signs and symptoms. A patient can have mental abnormalities, unusual change in energy level. There's changes in skin, nails, or hair, muscle atrophy, growth abnormalities, polyuria, polydyspia, cold, hot intolerances, unusual weight gain and loss, um, nausea, vomiting, irregular menstruation, and erectile dysfunction. Here is an image of the main endocrine glands. Please review them um, because in our next text, um, I'm sorry, please review them in your text, table 11.1, .1, um, that's on page 251. All right, hyperpituitarianism, uh, pituitarism. Uh, hyper is the medical terminology clue for what? That means it's overreact, overacting. In the case, um, there is a hypersecretion of human growth hormone, or HGH. This oversecretion is done by the anterior um, or forward pituitary gland. A cause of this oversecretion is um, gigantism. So think oversecretion and overgrowth as a giant. Um, that might help you remember. Gigantism typically results in the oversecretion during a child's growth years. Acromegaly, however, results from the hypersecretion of human growth hormone as an adult. This image here is a fine example of someone who suffered from acromegaly. It's Andre the Giant. The big guy's Andre the Giant. I don't know who the blonde haired guy is. Um, he used, he used, um, he used his condition to um, revel as a wrestler, but he was also um, a hit on the silver screen as one of my favorite characters in The Princess Bride. But unfortunately, due to this disease, he, wa um, he was faced with complications, and he died at a very young age of 46, I believe. Please don't quote me on that. Causes hi of hyperpituitarism um, begin with slow-growing um, adenoma. Oma is our medical terminology clue. This is a suffix, or er, suffix. Um, I don't know, the part where it's at the end of the word. So anyways, it's your clue. That means growth or tumor. In this case, it is a tumor on the pituitary gland. Adenoma releases high levels of human growth hormone. There are ge um, genetic links to this disorder. Signs and symptoms would be excessive growth for the long bones um, if it is a case of gigantism. There is an abrupt increase in height, gradual deformation of facial features, um, if the patient is suffering from acromegaly, there's enlargement of the hands, as recognizable in that previous slide with Andre the Giant. Um, there's also enlargement of the feet, head, tongue, which can cause difficulty to, um, articulating, talking, breathing. There's also excessive sweating, chronic sinus congestion, weakness, joint pain, along with numbness and tingling. Alright, this condition is diagnosed by the specialist getting a clinical picture of the patient's symptoms. This could be done with history and genetic link backgrounds being investigated. Glucose tolerance tests are the standard method for confirming elevated levels of human growth hormone. It is an interesting link to want to check um, a someone's glucose when the pituitary is of concern. However, human growth hormone helps regulate how people produce energy from food, so including glucose. For the test, a patient is given a glucose supplement and then blood is drawn every 30 minutes for a couple of hours to see how glucose is managed in the body. If a tumor is present, the growth hormone will not be affected and will continue at a steady rate. But for normal patients, the growth hormone should lower in the presence of glucose, hence the glucose test. Um, you can also diagnose hyperpituitarism with the use of an MRI, CT scan, and x-rays to visually get an idea of a tumor. This disease is treated surgically to remove any tumors, um, but radiation can be used as well to reduce or destroy the tumor and medication to stop human growth hormone production. Pop quiz! All right, what glands produce the human growth hormone? Think back to slide four. It wasn't that far ago. The um, answer is anter anterior pituitary gland. Anterior meaning the um, or, or the forward region. 
All right, let's take a look now in the opposite of the spectrum, hypopituitarianism, or pituitarism. Hypo meaning slow, like a hippo, if that helps you remember. This disease is commonly associated with the deficient of lower levels of gonadotropin and human growth hormone in the anterior pituitary. This complex disorder causes metabolic dysfunction, sexual immaturity, and growth impedance in children. It can result in hyposecretion of essential target gland hormones during the development. Etiology would be pituitary or hypothalamus tumors. Um, take the time now to review uh, the glandular image located um, uh, and locate that hypothalamus uh, gland. And that was like what slide like two or something. Um, the clue is it's in the brain. So congenital defects can cause hyper, hypopituitarism, as would pituitary vascular disease. <clears throat> there are iatrogenic links as well, and this is a word that you'll see again. Iatrogenic is something that arises due to medical involvement like surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation. Hypopituitarism symptoms depend on the age of the patient and where they are in the hormone cycle. Are they developing? Are they deficient? This disease may show signs of dwarfism in children due to the increase or due, due to the decrease in human growth hormone. I apologize. There is a slow emergence of secondary sexual characteristics due to low levels of gonadotropin as well. And these low levels of gonadotropin in women may cause um, amenorrhea, and, um, which is the absence of their menstrual cycle, or um, it could also cause infertility. Excuse me. Um, low testosterone levels in males may cause decreased libido, loss of um, body and or facial hair, decreased ACTH and TSH, the um, thyroid stimulating hormone levels from the disease may express fatigue, weakness, anorexia. I'm sorry, it's my dog behind me. This is drinking away. Um, decreased ACTH and uh, thyroid stimulating hormone levels from the uh, disease may express fatigue, weakness, anorexia, weight gain or loss, loss of skin pigmentation, um, uh, let's see here, uh, low tolerance and cold, muscle weakness, stiff joints, and poor response to stress, as you can read there, as I am doing as well. All right, to diagnose hypopituitarism, a patient's clinical history is taken. Um, lab tests are ordered to measure pituitary and target gland hormone levels. The image to the right is of the human pituitary gland along with the target organ, uh, organs it pinpoints. CT scans and MRIs are helpful looking for tumors or lesions as well. It is treated with hormone replacement therapy with a constant mon uh, monitory system of levels as a growing child has many changing hormones um, in such a small period of time. Surgical management of any tumors can take place too. <clears throat> Diabetes insipidus. This is another endocrine system disease. Um, let's see here. So this is where kidneys are unable to conserve water. There is an insufficient secretion of vasopressin, which is an antidiuretic hormone. When you think diuretic, think of diarrhea. That is where your body loses water. True, it's through bowel movements, but you're losing water. So if it is an anti-diuretic, anti-diarrhea, that means you're not losing water. So a person is actually retaining that water. However, if vasopressin is in the on-off switch of water retention, or if it is the on-off switch of water retention, um, and if it's at an insufficient level of secretion by that posterior pituitary gland, then we have an issue. Diabetes will set in when the kidneys fail to respond to vasopressin and the amount of fluid release in urine is affected. This disease affects men more than women and usually starts in early childhood. Okay, um, where are we at? Etiology. There can be tumors, hypo, <laughs> hypophysectomy, hypophysectomy. Okay, well that's the meaning the disease resulted due to the removal of the pituitary gland. Um, skull fracture, remember your pituitary gland is in the head and um, infectious or idiopathic. Signs and symptoms could start with polyuria and polyuria is just a, um, uh, it's a meaning of, uh, 
uh, multiple and then urea is the medical terminology clue for urine so polyuria is going a lot and then there's polydipsia which is um you have an intense thirst like you, a thirst you can't quench um ironically you would also have could have dehydration weakness and mental confusion my feathers look pretty good on this video Okay, it is diagnosed with urine analysis that reveals colorless urine with low osmolality. Dehydration test to rule out your uh, out other diseases. This means that a patient is denied fluids while all, um, hourly measurements of urine, osmo, um, body weight, and blood pressure are performed. After several hours, a vasopressin medication is administered, and if the patient can turn the page. If the patient was um, has diabetes insipidus, the vasopressin will decrease the urine output and increase urine osmolality. Um, to treat diabetes insipidus would be to increase fluid intake along with hormone replacement therapy. Pop quiz! Um, which hormone is deficient in diabetes insipidus? Number four, the antidiuretic hormone um, or vasopressin. Good job. All right, moving on to a new gland. Let's go to the thyroid. You can see in the picture there, there are four main types of thyroid disease, hyper, hypo, benign, and cancer. The thyroid gland secretes thyroxine, which is, we'll probably refer to it more as T4, that contains iodine and is responsible for cell metabolism and regulates growth. It also produces triiodothyrine, thyroid, T3 triiodothyronine. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, uh, it is a powerful hormone affecting every part of the body, including your body temperature, heart rate, and growth. To help you remember which is which, thyroxine um, has an odd number of letters and is associated with T4, 4 being an even number, and then triiodothyronine has an even number of letters and associated with 3, which is odd. So they kind of play role reversal. So think opposites, just a tool again to kind of help you remember these weird things to remember it will help hopefully help you if you see this uh, come up in quizzes or exams. All right, the goiter. A simple goiter is thyroid related. Um, this is when the thyroid becomes enlarged, but not due to an infection or neoplasm. This enlargement is endemic to a population or it could be sporadic. Um, it's more common in women, even though the um, statue that I have there is a male. The thyroid enlarges when it cannot secrete enough T3 and T4. When it was mentioned in the previous slide about the goiter being endemic, cases are increased in regions or populations where iodine is insufficient. I want you to remember the thyroid is associated with iodine. Um, Sporadic goiters follow ingestion. Oh, a sporadic goiter could happen after ingestion of certain drugs or food. For women being afflicted, using it occurs over the age of 40 with familial links. There um, is idiopathic, which is a fancy way of saying, I don't know. Um, it means that it comes about spontaneously with unknown causes and signs and symptoms of a goiter may appear as a small nodule or it could be large and swollen like it was on the front of the neck um, in referred to in that image in slide 617. <clears throat> to diagnose a goiter, um, other disease related to the thyroid have to be ruled out first. Uh, diseases such as Graves and Hashimoto's, which we'll talk about later, um, and large thyroid glands with T3, T4 levels being normal would be a way to rule it out. A biopsy of the nodule or um, a lump would be performed. Biopsies typically get processed by cytologists, um, but treatment focuses on reducing the size of the goiter. Uh, potentially dietary supplements of iodine would be prescribed along with lifelong hormone replacement programs. Um, excision is removal by surgical means. Another thyroid disease is hyperthyroidism. That's um, also known as Graves' disease. This is where the thyroid hormone is oversecreted, hyper, and causes a goiter, ophthalmol. Um, <laughs> man, these fancy words. Ophthalmopathy. <laughs> Ophthalmopathy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this time. 
ophthalmopathy. Ophthalmopathy. Oh, boy. Um, dermopathy and thyroid toxicosis. If I can't pronounce it, I'm going to try never to ask you guys to pronounce it either. Um, Graves disease affects women more than men. Etiology over secretion of thyroid hormones influence metabolism of cells throughout the body. Graves can be um, genetic, but more than likely it is uh, has an autoimmune link. And I have read studies as well regarding two women that have been exposed to jet fuels can be prone to Graves disease um, in an autoimmune form too. Signs and symptoms of Graves' disease could reveal a goiter or exophthalmus um, that may interfere with eye blinking, thickening patches of the skin on your feet or legs. There could be nervousness, anxiety, loss of sleep, excessive perspiration, heat intolerance, muscle wasting, bone decalcification, and cardiac problems. It is diagnosed by a physical manifestation of the disease. So blood tests are run to determine your th thyroid stimulating hormone. With Graves' disease, TSH is usually low. Radioimmunoassay is done to confirm increased levels of T3 and T4. A nuclear thyroid scan and blood test can show levels of high antithyroid immunoglobulins. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, once diagnosed, treatment depends on patient's age, gender, and severity of the disease. The treatment goal is to block the thyroid hormone production with surgery or radioactive iodine therapy. Short-term use of iodide compounds as well. On the other end of the spectrum, um, going away from Graves' disease, let's talk about Hashimoto thyroiditis. This is a chronic form of thyroiditis and is the most common type of hypothyroidism by typically isn't classified as such. The swelling and inflammation of the thyroid gland is also known as an autoimmune thyroiditis. Uh, this disease is truly, or if truly chronic, will again affect women more than men. And causes can be due to antibodies to thyroid antigens in a person's blood, it's another way of saying autoimmune. Um, when the inflammation causes lympho uh, lymphocytic infiltration, it goes from being chronic thyroiditis to Hashimoto thyroiditis. Signs and symptoms. There may be thyroid enlargement accompanied by pain and tenderness. Dysphagia could happen. Other symptoms include fatigue, difficulty concentrating, depression, cold, intolerance, um, dry skin, uh, and dry, brittle hair. <clears throat> Blood tests will help reveal elevated immunoglobulin levels and presence of antibodies that react with thyroid tissue. Oh dear, I think I have a feather in my eye. Yeah, there we go. Um, the disease is treated with hormone replacement and anti-inflammatory drugs. Hypothyroidism, cretinism, and myxoderma is, or myxedema are terms to describe a patient inflicted with this disease. This condition is due to under-excretion of the thyroid hormones. Cretinism results from a congenital deficiency of the hormone, while myxedema uh, results in the deficiency of hormones in childhood or adulthood. The thyroid disease also affects, this thyroid disease also affects women more than men. Etiology comes from the insufficiency or loss of thyroid tissue, iatrogenic causes due to surgery, radioactive iodine therapy, or congenital abnormalities. Common causes are inflammation and chronic autoimmune, um, if it does or er, if it does uh, advance into a chronic path beyond a chronic stage, then there's the Hashimoto thyroiditis. Uh, dietary or metabolic iodine deficiencies can also uh, cause hypothyroidism too. Signs and symptoms. In neonates, constipation and feeding problems arise. Uh, brain and skeletal failure fail to develop, growth is stunted, intelligence impaired, and there is a delay in secondary sexual characteristics. In children, there can be a hoarse cry, um, uh, sleeping too much, feeding issues. Um, again, for adults, symptoms are insidious, which means slow and gradual, yet still harmful. Fatigue, constipation, intolerance to cold, muscle cramps. Later, these symptoms can include mental clouding, diminished appetite and weight gain, dry skin, along with, again, brittle hair and nails. Radioimmunoassay um, reveals decreased levels of T3 and T4, as well as elevated thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid scans show diminished iodine uptake and blood tests show high serum cholesterol, alkaline phosphatase, and triglycerides. 
It is treated with lifelong hormone replacement therapy where infants would begin as soon as possible since development starts more quickly. Pop quiz. Um, cretinism is the result of what deficiency of thyroid hormones? Answer is located in slide 26. Congenital. C for cretinism and C for congenital. Okay, moving on. How about thyroid cancer? There are four main types. Papillary, where the cancer is slow to grow and spread to lymph nodes. Follicular, I'm sorry, my dogs are walking on the floors. Um, follicular types spread to lungs and bones. Lay down. Uh, where was I? Um, follicular, follicular types spread to lungs and bones. Medullary thyroid cancer has genetic links and spread to sporiatic. Um, and lastly, there is anaplastic. Uh, this is a very aggressive form of thyroid cancer with um, few survivors. So see page 258 and 259 for a closer look. All right, let's take a look at another gland. <clears throat> one close to the thyroid but is not the thyroid it is the parathyroid again go back to the beginning i want to say slide 16 and refresh your memory as where the um the hyper uh or not the hyper but where the parathyroid is located in the thyroid tissue hyperparathyroidism is also known as hypercalcemia hyper means oh. overproduction Lovely. stop Sorry, guys. Um, hyper means overproduction. Again, calc relates to calcium, which means this gland keeps balanced in the body. Um, unlike iodine that is associated with the thyroid, uh, the one the thyroid secretes um, and keeps balanced, not secretes. Um, and then there is the medical terminology clue of emia, again, meaning blood. So if you put this all together, you'll see that hypercalcemia means that the parathyroid, um, there's high levels of calcium, which results in high blood calcium levels. It's a general disorder of calcium and phosphorus metabolism, but they are inversely proportionate to each other. So high levels of parathyroid hormone causes hypo phosphatemia. I wasn't going to screw that one up. Hypophosphatemia. So calcium's going up, phosphate's going down. Um, so uh, that's what I mean by inversely proportionate to each other. PTH is directly proportionate, though, to calcium. So the parathyroid, if the parathyroid hormone is going up, that means calcium is up as well. Um, uh, primary cause of this is an adenoma of a parathyroid gland. Secondary causes could indicate chronic renal failure, dietary insufficiency of calcium or vitamin D, tuberculosis, and sarcoidosis, um, which is an inflammatory disease of the lungs. Now, uh, to the signs and symptoms, there is a gradual onset, but patients um, uh, remain asymptomatic, they could remain asymptomatic for quite some time. Uh, weak, brittle bones, joint pain, kidney stones, polyuria, again, peeing a lot, um, and then there's CNS disturbances and chronic fatigue. It is diagnosed by radioaminoassays that reveal increased levels of PTH, because remember, high levels of PTH, high levels of calcium, this is hypercalcemia, a 24-hour urine collection, yep, that's right, patients save their urine for an entire 24 hours and send it into us at the lab. Anywho, this urine shows calcium excretion, high levels. Blood tests normal. Um, blood tests normally show increased serum levels of calcium in the primary form and depressed in normal in the secondary form of hypercalcemia. And I've mentioned serum tests before, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, when a blood tube is drawn by a phlebotomist, which will be you guys eventually one day. Um, the uh, serum is the liquid part of the blood after coagulation has occurred. So that means that the clotting factors have all done their job and partnered up with the cells. Um, plasma, on the other hand, is another type of liquid part of the blood that has been treated with an anticoagulant, so no clotting. Serum phosphorus levels are decreased in hypercalcemia. Um, bone and mineral density tests, as well as CT scans of bones, help in this diagnosis since bones do tend to get brittle. All right, let's move to another slide now. Hypoparathyroidism or hypocalcemia. So basically everything we described, but in the opposite. Um, this is the under secretion of parathyroid hormone levels that cause high secretions of phosphate. So phosphates are going up, that means calcium's going down, and so is the PTH. This is um, inversely low secretion levels of calcium. 
hyperphosphatemia and hypocalcemia. There are also excessive deposits of calcium that arise in bone tissue. And if the person's body was trying to harm, like as if the person's body was trying to harvest um, uh, calcium from the source of the bone. So because calcium is so low, it's as if the body's trying to remove it from the bone. So you'll see these deposits in the bone. Um, cause is hereditary that creates underdeveloped or absent parathyroid. Um, so if you imagine if a cow is too small, so if the thyroid is too small, parathyroid is too small, it won't produce enough milk. Ergo, low calcium. Just trying to find ways to help you guys remember. Um, more frequently, this disorder is iatrogenic, resulting from the um, deliberate or inadvertent removal of the parathyroid tissue during surgery. Signs and symptoms tetany or parathesia um, of the extremities. This is a fancy way of saying muscle spasms. Um, there's neuromuscular irritability, muscle cramps. CNS symptoms include general irritability, anxiety, memory problems, and depression. Women are likely to have painful menstruations, brittle fingernails, and suffer from hair loss. Hypoparathyroidism is diagnosed again with radioaminoassay of the patient's serum revealing decreased levels of PTH. A 24-hour urine again is collected to evaluate calcium. Um, blood tests normally show decreased levels of serum calcium and serum phosphorus levels do what? Increase. Remember, again, they are inversely proportionate. It's just ways you guys have got to try and remember this. Um, lower than normal parathyroid hormone levels are seen. Bone, mer uh, bone mineral density tests um, are run as well um, as an electrocardiogram. Okay, on to a new disease. We're stepping away from the thyroid and parathyroid region. I'm going to talk about Cushing's disease. This is the hypersecretion of the adrenal cortex from the adrenal gland, resulting in the production of excess cortisol. Um, we will see elevated cortisol levels by a 24-hour urine test. It is um, important to determine both the urine and the serum levels. A low-dose dexamethasone suppression test confirms the diagnosis of Cushing's disease. People who are patients who have Cushing's disease tend to have this telltale sign of a type of, excuse me, adipose hump on the back of um, someone's neck, uh, like in the image up here in the right hand corner. Addison's disease is the inverse disorder of Cushing's, so this is considered adrenal insufficiency um, or hyposecretion from the adrenal gland, um, produces insufficient amounts of cortisol and androgen. Um, blood tests include potassium, sodium, cortisol, and ACTH. Review pages 262 to 63 for more comparisons of this disease. Um, interesting fact, uh, President jo uh, John F. Kennedy was afflicted with Addison's disease. Uh, diabetes mellitus. We did talk about diabetes before, um, but what was insipidus? This slide is covering um, mellitus, often referred to as type 2 diabetes, but there are other forms of this disorder that we are about to discuss. This is a chronic disorder of carb metabolism with the result of low or insufficient production um, and or use of insulin from the pancreas, and that's the link to the endocrine system here. Um, this disease causes hyperglycemia and diabetic ketoacidosis. Take the time to watch this video, so that means put me on pause, um, for a, visual, a visualization of, a, basically, it's a, I think it's called a virtual diabetic patient. Okay, there are four types of diabetes mellitus, immune-mediated type 1 diabetes, type 2 gestational, and then there is um, like a mod podge of other types lumped into the other category. Um, type 1 comes from a rapid, abrupt onset. It occurs prior to age 30, and there is a complete absence of insulin being secreted from the pancreas. Type 2 is a gradual onset. It is the most common form, and um, I'm sure commercials, you've seen commercials for treatments, uh, flood your device while binging on your favorite TV shows. Um, this t uh, form typically occurs after the age of 40. The pancreas has some insulin secreting ability, but it's not great. Uh, let's see here, gestational. Gestational diabetes is just that, when a woman is gestating. So um, it develops during pregnancy and then resolves post-delivery. Increased risk for developing type 2 diabetes later, uh, though, after someone who has suffered from gestational diabetes, so it's not as if the patient's in the clear entirely. 
the others category is caused by pancreatic dysfunction um, as a result to drugs, chemicals, um, potentially an infection. Signs and symptoms of mellitus. There is polyuria, glycosuria, or, um, there is polydipsia and weight loss. Um, more specifically, type 1, the patient begins to metabolize fats and proteins and deposits high level of waste called ketones in the body or in the blood. Uh, this condition is known as ketoacidosis. For type 2, this first sign could start with um, a heart to heal infection, blurred vision, muscle weakness, fatigue, um, and sometimes it often goes um, uh, asymptomatic. It's pretty simple to diagnose though, um, so it would be um, up to the patient really, all they need is consent. Uh, we would start with drawing a, a hemoglobin A1C test. This shows the average blood glucose for the past two to three months. An A1C level of 6.5% or higher on two separate occasions would indicate diabetes. Fasting blood glucose tests would yield 126 milligrams per deciliter after an overnight fast on two separate exams. This would indicate diabetes. Also, normal blood sugar levels should be between 70 and 110 milligram per deciliter. So 126 with no food or carb digestion would be a red flag. Um, imagine how high it would be if the patient had just eaten a sandwich. Um, oral glucose tolerance tests are uh, first performed after eight hours fasting and if blood glucose is between 140 and 199, this result um, that puts a patient into pre-diabetic or uh, condition, pre-diabetes. Um, the person is also administered 75 grams of glucose in dissolved water and tested for uh, two hours later. If the glucose levels exceed 200, um, the person is full-blown diabetic. Random uh, blood glucose tests higher than 200 also suggest um, uh, diabetes as well. So how is it treated? It's up to the patient, really. Diet, exercise are key for type 1 and type 2. Type 1 glucose monitoring and insulin management is a way to uh, keep in check on your progress. Type 2 diet control is important as well as insulin therapy. Ah, last pop quiz. Uh, all right, top uh, type 1 diabetes is insufficient in what being produced by the pancreas. I just mentioned it. What's the answer? Insulin. Insulin is brought to us by the pancreas thanks to the islets of Langerhorn. Okay, we made it. Um, I wasn't kidding when I mentioned the helpfulness of making a table of uh, between the different parts of the endocrine system and their hormones and tests. Um, so some key some key clues you can put together out of those disorders. Um, it would be easy to flip flop some info up there since so many things were alike. Um, anywho, so let's get ready for quiz six. This will cover the chapter on endocrine, um, which is chapter 11, and then chapter 12 is the cardiovascular and lymphatic diseases. Um, my tip for you, be familiar with um, like blank carditis, um, uh, blank anemias, blank lymphomas, or blank leukemias. Um, there's going to be lots of questions um, focusing on some of those diseases. Um, seems like another table might be handy. Um, so uh, like always, reach out if you have any questions and good luck.